first of all about the general reaction you have to uh, Senator Paul. And then I'm going to get into some specific issues with you. As the man who used to run these programs, how important, how effective have they been in keeping us safe? And how do you feel when you hear Senator Paul talk about uh, class action lawsuits to the Supreme Court, new congressional restrictions? Well, first of all, Chris, with regard to how effective they are, I think they're very effective. We've had two very different presidents pretty much doing the same thing with regard to electronic surveillance. Now, that, that seems to me to suggest that these things do work. Now, with regard to what the senator said, uh, if I believed NSA was doing some of the things the senator fears they're doing, I would have been backstopping him during your first segment. He said, we're trolling through billions of records. That's just simply not true. Uh, the government acquires records as business records from the telecom providers, but then doesn't go into that database without an arguable reason connected to terrorism to ask that database a question. If you don't have any link to that original predicate, terrorism, your phone records are never touched. Well, let, let, let's get into that, and let's talk a little bit, and I know it's, we're getting into right. kind of sensitive area here about the trade craft uh, right. that you were involved with as especially head of the NSA, but also the CIA. According to one estimate, the NSA is getting the phone records of three billion of our phone calls every day. Right. Three billion phone calls every day. <clears throat> Two questions. One, how can you possibly process three billion records a day uh, and, and secondly, why not just target from the very beginning the bad guys? Well, well, first of all, you have to identify who are the bad guys. So let's begin with the acquisition. Uh, three billion is a big number. But keep in mind, Chris, that our telecommunications providers do that every day on their own. So it's not impossible to do. Now you've got the data stored. Here's the important part. And this is the part that protects civil liberties and balances what Senator Johnson wants to balance, security and our freedom. You ask the database a question, but the, but the question has to be related to terrorism. I'm going to give you a concrete example, so this is very clear. So you, you roll up someone in, in Waziristan. You get a cell phone. It's the first time you've ever had that cell phone number. You know it's related to terrorism because of all the other pocket litter you've gotten in, in that operation. Here's how it works. You simply ask that database, hey, any of you phone numbers in there ever talked to this phone number in Waziristan? I mean, you're already going into the database with a predicate, with a probable cause, with an arguable reason why you're asking for the data. I've been talking, obviously this has been the subject in Washington and across the country this week. People are concerned about this mountain of data that you have. Okay, I mean, what you say sounds perfectly sensible. You know that there's a guy in Waziristan, you want to know who he's talking to in the United States. One, what do you do with all the records, the billions of records that you have on all of us law-abiding citizens, and what's the potential for abuse with the fact that you have all of that stored in a computer somewhere? First, answer your question, what do we do with all the other records? Nothing. All right. Potential you, you keep it, though. Oh, of course you do. Because, I mean, you get, you get the cell phone with that number six months from now, you want to know the history of that number. I mean, when, when does the value of that information begin to age off? So you do retain the, the, the information so that you can ask questions of it in the future. With regard to abuse, uh, there are no records of abuse uh, under President Bush, under President Obama. Now, I was criticized because I, I, theoretically, didn't have enough oversight mechanisms. But no one accused us of abuse. President Obama has in some ways, added incredible oversight mechanisms to this. Again, no abuse under either president. Let me, let, let me ask you about Obama, and then I, I promise Senator uh, Johnson I'm going to bring you back in after this final question. Back in 2006, Senator Obama voted against your nomination to be CIA director because of your involvement in government programs. From what you know, and I understand you've been on the outside, how much has he changed? He expanded, restricted these government surveillance programs in, in, that he inherited. In terms of surveillance? Yes. Um, expanded in volume, changed the legal grounding for them a little bit, put it more under congressional authorization rather than the president's Article II powers, and added a bit more oversight. But in terms of what NSA is doing, there is incredible continuity between the two presidents. How do you mean he's expanded in volume? Well, I mean, just because we've gotten more of these records over time and with the amendment to the FISA Act in 2008 which Senator Obama finally voted for NSA is actually empowered to do more things 
than I was empowered to do under President Bush's special authorization.